I V M. कृपया ध्यान दीजिए द लैंग्वेज यूज ऑन द पॉडकास्ट मे नॉट बी फिट फॉर कंजम्पन वी वॉन्ट यू ट्रेड केयरफुली बट लिसन यार डोंट बी सो कंजर्वेटिव Cyrus says a show which is sponsored by seven to eight different products which I can't name because uh, they've said we'll come in at the right time we'll surprise you but in the meantime our guest is a lovely lady very talented and hugely interesting conversation with a breathtaking show which is just released but before I get her on I'm a little upset I want to vent for a minute about the fact that we have the elections in Maharashtra just around the corner and my phone is here with me and it's not been ringing I have not got a call from any political party giving me a ticket. I don't know what's going on. So if anybody's out there watching the show, please talk to the relevant authorities, whichever party it is, right wing, left wing, whatever you are, center or a party which is complete shame. Uh this is the time to call because I want to decide quickly who I want to support, who where I want to stand and which constituency I want to represent. All these things must be done quickly. So remember, make that call. Have you ever wondered where the business world is headed? How the ways in which we create, market and sell to consumers will evolve or if we'll ever go back to wearing pants while working? For answers to all of this and more, tune into Advertising is Dead with me, Varun Dugirala. Every Tuesday, as I talk to entrepreneurs, leaders and change makers from across business, media, marketing and beyond, you can catch all episodes of Advertising is Dead on the IBM Podcast website, app or wherever you get your podcasts from. In the meantime, let's go straight to our fantastic guest and we go back a long way sort of I shall hardly remember me uh through her husband actually Lena Yadav award winning director married to a great cinematographer Asim Bajaj a man who is named after one of the great corporate empires of India uh, welcome to the show Lena thank you thank you Cyrus it was great <laughs> it's great catching up with you I I know but I'm worried because you're smiling already which means you're watching some other program and you're not on this podcast no, I'm not. <laughs> No I'm not. <laughs> okay now you tell me how you want to do this. We uh, this your I don't know where to start because there's 10000 things in your life. So many wonderful movies and moments and also I want to talk about your beginnings because that's the most important thing to me is how a person becomes who they are. But 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 we have to also uh, give house of secrets a lot of footage. So shall we start there? Okay. We'll okay. move backwards. So we'll move backwards. We'll just do yes. that first, so everybody, your PR company and all are happy. Also, and we don't want to upset okay, them. Done. Why I'm whispering, yeah. I don't know, because they can still hear everything we are saying. <laughs> This is when you grow up in the '90s. You're so tech challenged that you do these stupid things. I yeah. know. I still, I still spell S E X and words like that out because I don't want to offend my mother or my daughter and all that. You know, and 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 everybody looks at me like I'm mad. I don't know why I do that. Yeah. Okay, Lena, are you ready? Shall we go straight yes. to it? Yeah. Um so we have a little idea about this burari that's because our producer silvery young boy he likes only this genre uh, not to be insensitive about it but uh, i can't remember the names of the american serial killers and all we were discussing it and this falls into that you know this i don't know the psychology of why people kill commit mass suicide or have this cult like uh, sort of situation where one alpha leader causes them to do crazy things so why didn't you tell us firstly what a little bit of the background of this whole thing it's a very very uh, i would say horrific conversation but we need to have it yes so in 2018 when i read this news that 11 people were found hanging in their own house three generations one of the first things that i just didn't buy it just in the initial narrative and they said it's a mass suicide is a 14 year old being convinced to do anything today unquestioningly you know and uh, then the whole conversation went into some crazy like religious babas coming on to shows and I don't know where this conversation finally went and I was like I was not answered a single question I, I mean actually I even lived with I didn't know whether it was murder or suicide because I was not buying into the suicide but I didn't know that it was murder it was really crazy what what were the reports the uh, papers and all what did they say they said it was suicide you know it made a lot of noise for about a month and it just fell off the map by the time the answers were coming in everything stopped and what i was shocked is that i didn't even know like 20% of what really happened at that point in time and i said why is the single journalist writing an analytical piece on this there is so much here even to me who knows nothing about it and so that's where it stayed and it kind of stayed with me and uh, then in 2000 and end of 2018 itself the uh, netflix international team was coming to india and they said would you like to meet them and i was like Yes there's just one thing that's ever like kind of 
I wanted to do an investigative piece on and this was the case. So I went, met them and just like they were instantly in and uh, that's how this happened. And then I got to do my own investigation. But that's what I'm saying. Is it very gutsy and also, uh, I would say, a little dangerous thing to do, right? Because unlike, say, some famous, whatever, the David Koresh and all these things in America that we hear about, where there's lots of print matter on them and uh, when the person wants to make a biopic or whatever on those situations, here you had really nothing. It's a bit like the Arushi uh, murder, which, you know, there's so many perspectives to it etc so firstly tell us how did you start and how did, because how did you put it together the second part is shooting the film but how do you put together the whole research and the story you know i didn't think about any of the things that i should have thought about when i committed to doing this because there's no documentary culture here when you ask somebody that can i interview you for them you become the news media and that camera it's trauma you know and then this... Unless it's Insta. Well, when it's Insta, they all use their damn cameras yeah. and irritate all of us. Huh? That, that's okay. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. Insta tax. There's something I want to talk about later. But uh. the awareness also of technology, whether it's cops or... Like, everybody's feeling, are you recording my conversation? You know, there's mm. so much of sensitivity towards that. Correct. Firstly, I didn't realize how difficult these conversations were, especially when you're talking to a friend or a family member. You know, like, Correct. it is it is so invasive for you to... Go take them to the place where which hurts the most. So, but did you have a guide with you in a sense? Keep police ka koi hai or contact who knows them? How, how do you start? That's exactly what I, I, I think it's ridiculous. <laughs> I can't believe you knock on a door, Mrs. Sharma. Uh, my name is Lena Yadav. I'm making a film on your cousin's murder. You did that. That's exactly. I, yes, yes. But you know, uh, before that, what happened is I decided we have to start shooting on the first of uh, I mean, around the first because I expected they should. There should be some conversation in the media, like literally one year down. There should be more answers or some discussion about it. So we ended up starting the shoot on the 1st of July. And the thing is, once I reached Delhi with a really small crew, I was like, what am I doing? Why am I doing something so dark? This is going to like eat me up. And then I said, you know what? Now nobody's actually going to talk about it and it's not going to happen. So let the universe decide. So I said, okay, first thing I need is the cops. So took an appointment with the com- that then commissioner Amulya Patnaik ji, um, got the appointment, went, met him. He signed on to a letter that said, I want to talk to everybody down the line from the main cop to the Havaldar. So, so here the important part is that because you're a known name, your body of work, moment he realizes that you made this film, that film, that must have helped or he genuinely wanted to help? What I do you don't think? know. I think he generally saw value in it because he said like, yeah, it's quite a strange case because before this what had happened is because of some previous work where people went into jails and shot the cops had really that's why you really need no cop can give anything they get a bad name something yeah so the commissioner has to give the permission for any level of conversation with any kind of media so anyway so i got that permission then i was like you must have become very unpopular lena after that because if you get high command ka hukum then the rest will hate you because there's no question of bribery going down the line Yes. (laughs) Yes. <laughs> <laughs> what have you done? You created a very bad precedent <laughs> in our business. Yeah. yeah. So once that was on, I was like, now there's no looking back. Like I've got this permission. Now we have to go for it. So then, then the difficulty started st- actually going and knocking on the neighbor's door and saying we are so and so and this is what we're trying to do. Firstly, what is documentary? They think they want you, we want them to enact things. <coughs> Second, it's just like we don't want to talk to you because I think a lot of them were handled very, very insensitively by the media at that point in time. So they were. Can I ask you one question? Sorry, in the middle. So if you go into the. Suppose you. Mrs. Sharma ka door, you knock on it and you take your camera in. Do you start recording candidly immediately while you're no. asking the question, Ki, may I talk to you or you have to set it up later? No, there are very strict documentary ethics and rules. So you can't force yourself. You actually cannot. Okay. No. How sad. No. In fact, like, yeah. <laughs> I, I think that's the best technique to do. Anyway, go on, go on, go on. I'm so sorry. Also, uh, so another you... big learning, never have pre, uh, you know, like a rehearsal conversation with people. Correct. Especially here. I don't know how it works internationally, but especially here. Because we are very different in the way we give out and keep information. So if they've spoken to you once, now you do it on camera, you're not even going to get 5% of it. So most interviews I've done, like if once they've given us permission, we were very sensitive about not forcing or, you know, and there was a Mrs. Sharma, by the way, you, since you keep taking the name, I just took who a did not give us permission to interview <laughs> <laughs> who didn't give us really? permission? Really? Ma'am, if yeah. you're listening, why didn't you? You'd have become famous if nothing else. Did they ever ask for money? 
no na no i think uh, I mean, this is not a subject where huh she was very very traumatized yes and some people do feel like you're exploiting me so give me money i mean because there is no culture of knowing what is a document aap to bade paise banaoge you know that that thing is also there so uh, which could be which sometimes could be true also and so yeah yeah <laughs> but here's amazing no, but we did a good job Huh. But you know, nobody in the group of people you're talking to. There's nobody who said, "Boss, what a great idea! Let me help you." Yeah, no, the police didn't hear us. Sorry, properly, etc., etc. There must have been somebody. Oh no, no, Cyrus, this is such a difficult conversation to have for wow. anyone, for anyone, for anyone. Is sharam aati hai logko? What is the reason why they don't want to talk? Fear. Then you know because we've not spoken about these things, right? So what happens is something uncomfortable has happened. We have a silent family pact that nobody will ever talk about. I mean, if you see in the story when Lalit had the accident, his mother told all his friends, "Do not mention that incident." So for us, it is just shut up now. We'll never talk. So these conversations they've not even had amongst themselves. You know, so yeah. nobody wants to go to the truth. You know, you want to just say it's uncomfortable. How can such a huge what do you call it ma- mass murder or mass uh, death or whatever you want to call it? How can it just be? push away like that and people just carry on like like we won't talk about it i mean is there some psychological in cases like this they shame also no how people start looking at you like oh you're those quaint people we it's at so many levels that we are shut down at so many levels like you know so uh, they were very i mean that point on it got really complicated and how do we even ask them and then once you're interviewing them how do you take them to places that they've not even allowed themselves to think about you know and now you're asking that question but one of the brothers in uh, narayan gar after the interview he thanked us and he's like i feel like like a big weight has lifted because we've never spoken about these things to each other wow is it i i so the power of you we need to talk about things is so much so much i think even more today just think if my neighbor's family god forbid got wiped out or something like that one would be very happy to help unearth what happened i would think human nature i'm wondering why people get into a more cowardly state or, or whatever you want to call it like back, going on the back foot uh, rather than on the front foot because i think uh, they were asked so many, like imagine this has happened discovery happens now suddenly cops are asking you and you've not even processed the fact that this has happened then they are the people shoving cameras into your face and asking you things and suddenly there is this uncomfortable thing about this family and you want to dissociate from it you know so it's complicated okay you don't want to give out the uh, plot and uh, i mean it's not like the plot is not known we don't give out whatever the ending and where it leads to etc etc but going back uh, when you so what are you doing when you're listening to them talk and just give us an idea of how do you construct it because you don't know really what's happening in a way it's organic it's happening and you also don't know uh, so especially when we were dealing with people who've never done this before in their lives okay you have to start the conversation somewhere else you know probably about themselves we have to bring them into the story oh, or this is like how you talk to the boss <laughs> <laughs> you talk about uh, mummy daddy kaise hai and all that you <laughs> start from there and then is sorry i have to remove you from the job <laughs> <laughs> yeah so oh, that's crazy you have yeah. to build trust you know because it can go anyway so you have to hit the right amount of trust before you go into more personal kind of stuff so i don't know that's just an instinctive kind of thing but uh, yeah and your conversations with them also are driven by them by who they are and their personalities and the way they react to you so it's been yeah it's been a huge learning can i ask a personal question did it hmm. gross you out or freak you out a little bit as the uh, events unfold and you're because you're living with it every day literally for a long period of time as in oh, for yes. us it's a newspaper article or pada ek bar or fir you know you sort of you know that's it so does it really not just me i think the whole team whole team went through quite a, uh you know quite a ride because it started with extreme fear we all had nightmares at some point you know uh, then the discomfort of oh my god what are we going to find and it's going to be so close i mean we went through the whole thing and then we we went through it with the edit team i mean like editing in documentaries is like writing the script and we had an amazing yeah. edit team between here and la um every day we were on zoom calls chatting and then i mean we were actually supposed to edit from there but then lockdown happened so the whole edit was done on zoom calls where it is bizarre but we used to talk about the edit and we used to talk about our lives in covid at that point in time i mean from la to bombay and it was intense i mean and it was really a heavy subject to do in these times 
but what is it about us human beings i mentioned my producer he'll come in about 10 minutes on the show as well uh we all seem to be fascinated i don't know are we is it a perverse thing in our heads or something that we are all fascinated by mass murders the the psychology of killing death and this kind of multiple suicide which is i'm i'm mean, the ultimate violence uh and but you know we are making the programs you're living the living that entire story which is a very painful thing as you just mentioned why do we do it what's what's with us human beings yeah it's human beings all over the world that's why crime is like one of the most popular genres but for me when we went into the story it was not crime anymore it was so much it was like a social autopsy <laughs> you know that's that's where it was more a why done it than a who done it actually yeah well who done it i don't I won't give it away again but it's sort of that okay let's not get into the ending at all but yeah but you know, why is more important in any case in many ways because you always want to know what is the motivation behind a person's let's call it behavior i don't have better words to use not a psychiatrist but yeah. uh, I, but i'm and the fact that people are going to watch this and rewatch it and discuss it just tells you that i don't know whether deep inside there's some sort of love lust for blood and murder and death which maybe we have not come to terms with but i uh, but kudos to you for making it i think it takes a lot of guts and you obviously obviously do your own thing a very individualistic personality so no one will stop you uh, not even the commissioner of police they have opened the doors for you so you can see immediately and this is because of mr bajaj Asim yes. Bajaj, our good friend, your husband, leading cinematographer, yes. who worked, ladies and gentlemen, he began his career at MTV working with the likes of me. All right, and uh, we used to have great discussions on philosophy and all this. I didn't know he'd become such a big star, and his wife would become an even bigger star. And if he sees this, uh, let's see how he handles that. But uh, no, he's so proud of you. Uh, let's now go back to your personal life a little bit, Lena. Going back to the beginning, we have so yeah. many movies to talk about. All that, but uh, I don't know how many will fit in. But people can Google that. I'm interested in the young Lena Yadav. This sounds like a creepy old uncle talking. But when I mean young <laughs> Lena Yadav, I mean uh, we, we know vaguely that you have an army background. That you know you grew up here, you grew up there. But how do you get into this line? Give just give us a little idea about you know when you were young. Why? Why did you? I actually want wanted to be an architect. What do you say? I don't have one of those stories that ever since I was four years old I wanted to be a filmmaker. How sad! Documentary picture will be made, na? Then we'll put it in. We'll put it in. <laughs> Oh. Okay, done. <laughs> so you so didn't sleep on the marine drive pavement and all. You don't have those legendary stories, yeah. Oh. No, no, no. I wanted to okay. be an architect, and I, I wanted to go to just one school, which is in Ahmedabad, CEPT. But for some strange reason, after seven days of continuous examination, I got eliminated. Then I was very angry with architecture, and I just said, like, we'll see what happens. And I ended up in economics <laughs> honors, which was like I didn't even know what I was getting into. <laughs> and uh, there on i just said i can't do this i have to do something and now i realize actually because of the army background we were in a new city every two years the only way i made friends is because i told people fantastical stories so that was the germ of it i guess <laughs> But yeah. as a young girl, it didn't occur to you when you see a film or when you read a book or something. You didn't want to be a creative person in that sense. You didn't, no. you know, that that was never an idea in your head. No. But it's it's amazing that uh, like I won't say failed architect, but architecture turned its doors or shut its doors, and you went yeah. to into another thing, a place completely overnight, yeah. and immediately uh, became successful. You started with TV first, right? Editing in television yes. and stuff. Yes, I just worked as an assistant on one project. and then i said if i want to be a director i don't know any skill like so then i decided to that, learn that's editing. what directing is <laughs> <laughs> yeah so i said you hire the sub, right people ha huh. huh. i thought what if sab mere ko buddhu banaye you know i should know something at least so i said okay uh, i learned editing then and uh, then i started editing i edited just one show and after which somebody asked me to direct something but i think all my learning of direction comes totally from editing i think that's so i'm for me editing is god <laughs> we've got quite a few of you all na no? editors who became fabulous directors and left a mark the raju hirani is yourself yes. there are there are three yes. four uh, people who have gone that way i think way. they make the but, best uh, directors asim also tells me cinematographers should never make directors <laughs> really because so editors you see everybody's work and you make those choices of what's the best whether it's performance or it's you're also seeing like sometimes oh. saying oh god why did we shoot it like this why didn't he take this angle it would have been more impact so you're actually learning each time doing that so i think editors will make very economical directors also like i don't take too many takes or angles and stuff i already know the way i want it edited so what you're saying is by learning about the mistakes that you saw while editing you sort of yes. learned what is not to do what not to do teaches yes. you how to make a film literally totally 
Totally. That's a great concept, <laughs> honestly. Okay, so then from uh, how did the first film happen then from there? Because it's a long way off from editing to directing uh, as in terms of somebody giving a film to make. Yeah, so I was directing a lot of shows in television at that point in time and I had written a script and at the, which point Asim was doing a film with uh, Pritish Nandi Communications and he said, why don't you go and narrate this because I think it'll make a great film. I said, no, no, I'm not ready. And he's like, listen, it's not the first guy who's going to make your film. It might take you five years. Okay, so you better start now. <laughs> So I said, okay. See, behind every successful woman is a man. I've been Always. saying this. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> so then I went for that meeting. And by the end of the narration, they were making calls to actors. I was like, wow. oh, this is actually happening. <laughs> wow. So yeah, that's how uh, Shabd happened. So, so this uh, is good, basically good karma. I mean, a lot of yeah, things just fall into place. Also, yeah. not to take away from your talent, obviously, or your effort and all that. But there's also a little no. bit of, you know, meeting the right person at the right time. Uh, Absolutely. No, I think that's a huge part of our industry. I mean, a lot of times I meet some really amazing actors who've been auditioning forever, not getting the role. And it's really sad because it is a lot of luck. It is a lot of luck. I mean, then your talent sees you through, but... A lot of luck around the way. <laughs> so, yeah. a quick word on the love story. Since again, just reminding everybody who's listening, Asim, her husband, Asim Bajaj. Uh, now, of course, DOP and huge films and all of whatever he chooses to work now, different from the old days when we had to work. But how do you all meet, and what's the love story there? Uh we my the first show that I ever got to direct. So the show I was editing, Asim was the assistant cameraman on. And when I got to direct my first show, he comes to me and. And I used to find that he talks a lot whenever he came to the edit room. Too much. I was like, Lina, yeah, too, too much. much. <laughs> I used to tell the director, take him out. Like, <laughs> But then anyway, he came and asked me, he said, listen, you got your break. Why don't you give me a break? And I said, okay, fine. And we started, I just like literally said, okay, fine. And we started shooting. And then in the beginning, he was very badly disciplined. <laughs> but in, in the sense... Every- in, in, in terms like of he work. would come late and all that. Yeah. He would come late. He was amazing at work. Now, that's the yeah. thing. After every day of shoot, I would come back and say, I can't work with this guy. And then I would work with someone else. And oh my God, his but, frames, but his what, lighting what, is somewhere else. Uh, okay. So aesthetically, you were very happy. Creatively, yeah. you were very happy. But yeah. what, what do you call the, the other side, the discipline yeah. side or whatever, that was irritating yeah. you? Yeah. Yes. I'm asking you this question. So I, I said, to... let me just discipline him, man. And so I said, okay, now just... Let's uh, shades of S- SNL in the relationship. <laughs> I don't want to get into it. Asim, watch out. I'll get beaten up. But uh, you know, well, I'm just asking. It's a slightly uh, mean question to ask. But I, I always find it. Isn't it difficult to be, have two creative people both doing really well in, in exactly the same field? Now, because you're both are in features. You know, at least yeah. if you were in television and he was in something else in some d- distance. I mean, my wife's a photographer and a painter, and I'm—I don't know what I'm doing, but we have enough issues. So I'm just trying to think. <laughs> you guys are literally in the same. So how does that work? I think it's great, Cyrus. But that's our friendship, right? Do you do you criticize? Can you critique him? Can he critique your film? Totally. Is that good? Oh, fully, fully. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And do you accept it, or uh, he has to sleep outside? No. Sometimes I tell him. I said this is sensitive, so just. Yeah, I, sometimes I warn him and I tell him, just give me the right reaction. <laughs> oh, he's learned what jawab to give no, by now. <laughs> yeah. This is like take 177 or something. By now he's got his lines right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but there's no rivalry. There's no... No, there's never. Not at all. I, I know of a father and daughter who in the same line and they have rivalry. Not at somewhere. all. Very initially, I used to feel a bit jealous when he would go and shoot with someone else. And he used to come and say, oh my God, it was such an amazing day. But that's gone now. I mean, I think we are so <laughs> so, secure. <laughs> so cheating in a relationship is shooting with another production house. Yeah, okay, I get it. And taking another a actor. shot for another director. <laughs> Infidelity, yes, man. Yes. <laughs> you put it on me. Wow, that's yes. fabulous. Okay. Uh, what we're going to do is we'll take a break, which we have, and we'll bring Silvery in. A lot more we want to talk about, of course. Uh, but of course, we'll come back to the show of the moment, which is all about... Uh, uh, Burari House, which is all about how, how do you describe secrets. it? What is in a one line? It's all about secrets. Ghar ki baad ghar mein rehne uh, house ki of hai. secrets, correct. House of secrets. Yes. Yeah. Hey everybody, it's been another great week on the IBM Podcast Network. On Advertising is Dead, founder and CEO of Growth School, Vaibhav Sinisti, joins Varun. They discuss cohort based learning courses and where Edutech is headed. Why does every marketer need to understand attention span better? On Smarter with Sid, Siddharth helps us understand the concept of attention and how to leverage it. On Tere Mere Raas Day, Kesho takes us on a trip to Turkey. He visits the city of Cappadocia. 
On Pesa Vesa Anupam is joined by Sudarshan Lodak, CEO and co-founder of Strata. They discuss everything you need to know about fractional ownership. And on Postcards from Nowhere, Utsav explores the bizarre story of the origins of modern Malayalam, from a breast tax to a religious power struggle. Do follow us on social media. We're IVM Podcast on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and LinkedIn. Also, do remember, go check out our website, ivmpodcast.com slash YouTube, to get a list of all of our YouTube channels. And remember, if you're enjoying this show or any of our other shows for that matter, please do tell a friend. And finally, we would like to thank our sponsors on the network this week, Cred, Bank of Baroda, HDFC Mutual Fund, Coinswitch, Kuber, Intel, and Oxfam India. Thank you so much for making this possible. Wow, and we all have secrets. Silvery, please join the show. Uh, come in. He's fascinated, Dina, with this genre. Fascinated. Okay, he's been talking about this. I'm not making this up. I'm not lying. I swear on God. He, <laughs> of course, we all discuss these, um, what do you want to call them, serial killer ka jo culture hai, or subculture. Oh, yeah. That's there. It's there on all your OTTs and it's there in books and everything. So we've discussed it, but they've mostly been outside India. We've not really looked at India. So it's always almost like a fairy tale which doesn't really affect us. This is the first one which we, you know, which is the most scary because now it's home. It's like yeah. the virus has come in a sense. <laughs> and this boy has been right on it from the beginning. He's a huge fan. I think it's uh, a voyeuristic thing. I think uh, I think a lot of hu- humanity wants to know what the worst of humanity can do. You know, like I think uh, it's that because most of us would never do this. But it's just fascinating to see that what can be done at the worst of times. Uh, this comes yeah, down to the, I sorry, know. if I can just quickly yeah. say, this comes yeah. down to the, the yeah. Batman and Joker thing because Joker says it's just about one bad day. That's the difference between uh, becoming Batman and becoming Joker. So it's just that whole, I think that thing is that. Yeah, Premchan ka baap aage hai Raj. I'm very impressed. Lina's writing down notes now. You're quoting Batman and Joker and oh, too good, too good. Very good. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I still think that, you know, it takes a little bit out of, Lena's uh, obviously not going to tell us everything fair enough, but it takes, a, it takes a lot out of your body emotionally and physically to go through all these people discussing this real thing. You know, I mean, when you shoot a feature, which is basically a script and it's, I mean, have you tasted blood in a sense? I hate to use this word because fiction is only so interesting. Uh, non-fiction, when it's something like this, I mean... I think that's why this is the genre, honestly, where, where all of us turn to, as you said, crime and organs based on reality. So Totally tasted blood. <laughs> yeah, so I, I, you know, I don't know, we shouldn't be glamorizing it or anything like that. But for some reason, everyone is interested. I cannot believe we start a conversation on House of Secrets and people will be very interested in it immediately once they know what the topic is. As again, supposing we just take any other normal uh, feature or OTT show and just try and describe it. And that's a little scary thing for me, that human nature being what it is, that we immediately, I can't think of anyone who will say, hey boss, nahi, nahi, nahi. They, they might get a little scared or whatever, but everyone's interested in some way. Uh, so, Lena, just... Yeah. Uh, and I'm very, yeah. very surprised at the range of audience that this has garnered. It's crazy. It's crazy, crazy. Like, everybody's seen it. And it's not an age thing, na? See, because I'm just... Again, th- we can't give a profile. What's the profile? You see some OTTs or whatever, you say the profile is 15 to 25 or the profile is such and such p- class of person or whatever. What is the profile here? Every single person is the part of the profile. And that that is a scary thought for me. I just keep thinking. Because like he said, not to quote Joker again, but it's something like we're touching with the negative side of our human spirit, whether we're an 80-year-old uncle, a chacha who's retired, or a 12-year-old kid who's just interested in this gory details. Uh, oh, still worrisome for me. And that's, you know, <laughs> you could try to sell something about a, a patient dying of AIDS, and it perhaps won't work so well, a very sensitive so, sort of subject. But this... Straight on. I, as you said, uh, the Netflix picked it up. Not to criticize them, for God's sake, if they're listening, they're lovely people. We, we live off them. But they picked it up by me immediately. Love the thing. <laughs> yeah, sorry, Silver, you were saying something. Yeah, so I have a question for Lena. Uh, Lena, a few years b- before this, uh, before this case that happened, the Burai desk case. You started with Lena, ma'am. Lena, ma'am. Abhi ma'am ho gaya. And okay. she's, a, she's a 4G kid. Huh? She wants her ma'am. You better okay, show okay. respect. You you want want okay, 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 no, okay. I don't want. Okay. I don't want much much. No, please. <laughs> 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 okay. He's, uh, he's from boarding school, so there's a little similarity in the formality. Well, uh, that's true. Bolo. Uh, so we did actually have uh, military teachers, uh, like people who had been retired from the military and were like now are uh, coaching us in school and all, and they would hit us <laughs> with, uh, on their on our bums if we stopped wa- started walking during a jog or something. That's you have thing. taken the podcast. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. From this I'm just talking about school side to how you were beaten by a retired army guy just because yeah. she has a connection with the force. Yeah. Now, what yeah. the hell? And she has this to call up her family and say that she has a heart attack. Yeah. Punch in 1997. <laughs> <or> 2004. <laughs> That's your next show. Next <laughs> the punch beatings. Punch beatings. Yeah. 
<laughs> yeah. Uh, so okay, a few years before the Burari case in Bangladesh, uh, there was a uh, something called the Adams Cult uh, suicides. I don't know if you're aware of this. You've heard of this. You clearly oh heard of God. this. Oh my God, I have not yeah. heard of it. I've investigated that. Also. Oh, exactly. Uh, that's what my next question. Okay, is that something you are maybe looking into? Uh, could be the next season of House of Secrets or something like that. How can you go back to back, Lena, <laughs> no. with the same genre? It'll kill you, no? Emotionally, I'm no, thinking. No, no. <laughs> actually why why we looked into that it was really interesting because the diary writing started just two months after that case oh wow i'll, I'll just explain to cyrus what happened uh, in oh. 2007 cyrus in bangladesh uh, so this this uh, uh, these people called they were later on came to be known as the adams cult and nine of them committed suicide by hurling themselves in front of a train all nine of them and the same thing happened they they from their house which came to be again known as as adam house uh they found diaries and in the diaries was written that uh, the reason was that they wanted to be pure like adam and eve and they cut ties from islam like they were islamic before that and they cut they cut ties from the religion and uh, i think what my understanding is they find this in france side with other religions and they were like okay we want to be pure we want to be free and that was so why die i understand you want to leave the religion it's a cult yeah why kill yourself yeah. that's uh, all i know lena will tell us in the next season i guess <laughs> <laughs> uh, again without giving away things hey, does drugs and that kind of thing sedatives and all play a role play a role in all this when there so no. many people are involved no the belief is the drug so no. you don't need all that it's purely just the what is it poisoning of the mind or the controlling of a mind also wanting to be controlled at one level i mean i'm not an expert on it at all i mean just from what how one tries to understand it it's it's nothing no. is one way i mean you have to have a set of people willing to you know submit to you um, to be able to carry this off in this adam uh, case whatever it's nine people in this case it's 14 is it uh, 11 that's 11 that's a lot of you know i mean there's a variety there you know surely somebody is going to put their hand up and say boss ye nahi chalega you know i mean <laughs> that, you know, that's the thing that comes to mind maybe you can influence one person two people but how does everybody want to kill themselves how do you explain that like even shared psychosis if you read across the world it generally happens between two maximum three people 11 is unheard mm. of so it, it it is some kind of uh, belief system which he was able to build within Lina, that family and oh. when i try to convince my wife to walk the dog instead of me that <laughs> argument i lose we are talking about convincing 10 15 people to kill themselves i mean i can't get someone to cross the road or, or or not break the one way or you know i mean <laughs> just the power of somebody's mind okay that's again putting glamour into the situation but it is it's i don't know it's it's very some isn't it are we stupid it's very it's very very some at too many levels i mean it is is it a metaphor for a... politics that you can just lead people anywhere and they'll do anything it's kind of i guess it's it's a failure of our education system at so many levels right like whatever mm-hmm. if we are educated how, why aren't we are not we don't ask why when we should <laughs> we don't yeah we don't ask why this is a big point yeah. we never we never question even with the covid and everything i'm i fight with people all the time why do we have to always follow we just question somebody says clap uh, you know shut the lights for 9 minutes and india will be a better country don't worry lena if there's something disturbing you take it don't worry this is a very informal show no, no, my we mom have no was... <laughs> Mom is more people. important than the podcast. Mom is more <laughs> no, important no. than the podcast. Done, Please. done, done. <laughs> no, nothing oh. to feel worried about. Uh. No, done, done. Yes. One other thing I want to ask Lena about is: Did you actually get the physical diaries in your hand? Did you get get a chance to hold the diaries? Uh, we did hold the diaries when we shot at the forensic labs, but okay, well. uh, what we had finally were uh, quite a few pages which various journalists gave us because this was. uh still uh, sub judice at that point in time so we could not have physically got uh, diaries but yeah we did quickly glance through them when we were at the forensic wow. lab and we were taking shots of them you weren't allowed to take pictures and all that no but we had access to uh, about 60 70 pages uh, i mean in and pictures of- this was this was uh, i think some uh, journalists had it from the time when the case happened from the beginning right yeah. right and we had access to the to the main page which was the final uh, act we had oh, access yes. to that again that is also fascinating because in the diaries as, as described on the show it is said that it seems like they expected to survive uh, i think that was the thing right that that uh, they had like a whole list of instructions of what to do after this ritual and this is how you unbound yourself and this is what you do after we don't give away the stuff we want people to watch oh, also i'm sorry so i'm let, sorry let's, just... let's keep it in a, in a middle zone 
Uh, not a spoiler, but yeah. Yeah, I'm sorry. That was, I felt like a spoiler. It's not okay. a review. <laughs> it's still running. Yeah. I got too excited. But again, so that end part is also this really makes you think that uh, if you are being uh, tied to a stool, tied to tied to like a rod above you, and you're still expecting to survive, how are you not understanding that what I'm doing would still asphyxi- asphyxiate me? You know, I don't. I don't. I don't want to have the answer again. Yeah. These these yeah. are unanswered questions. I don't think anyone has will ever. That is why I mentioned drugs and all because you know it's not making sense. Is there more force than that we know about uh, that was used in some in some way? Uh, I know in some of these cult things we've discussed, American cult things, there has been a lot of drugs involved. I'm not saying uh, you just just to lessen the mind's uh, ability to analyze what's going on, and then maybe some group behavior takes place, group dynamic takes place, which we are. You know how men behave when we are drunk or something like that. I don't know, but but the cops cops said that they didn't find any uh, signs of struggle or uh, resistance. So it it really go. is a mystery. What really happened there that night? Nobody knows. I mean, just nobody knows that. Okay, not to be insensitive again. In fact, if they had not found the diaries, I don't know whether the case would ever been have been solved. You know, the, again, I, I do. I don't want to sound insensitive because this is a very, very touchy subject. But this is why I like Karan Johar. You know, because ultimately <laughs> he makes films. You know, their families are very nice to each other. Maximum, you know, you forgot the the anniversary or something. I mean, it's just not really bad stuff that's going to happen. You know, <laughs> sometimes you need to jump into that because when you see the other side, what Lena has made just now, and the, how horrible human beings can be. Because deep down, you have to put the blame again, not to giving it away, but you have to point the finger at someone. And you know. <laughs> And then sometimes it's better to just, it's all about loving your family is a nice tagline to go back to. Lina, will you make a film, uh, Karan Johar-like film soon? One of those uh, lovey-dovey 90s, uh, 2000, early 2000 films where it's all, nothing really happens, but we're all happy. Not in, in my and sh- Shadi <laughs> shots. Come on, Lina, ek bar to kar lo, yaar. don't knock it till you try it. You've gone the other way already with this strong... Uh, I, I will. I will try it one day. But Lena, out of all the genres that you've done, already you've done so much, is this the most, what is the word, uh, not difficult, but maybe complex? No, it's it's just been a very different because experience. you don't know what you're getting? Yeah, so that that the experience of doing this, though you're telling stories in both, uh, the experience, I've learned a lot in this journey, which I'm going back to take back to narrative also. You know, because I think uh, we really need to open some doors in narrative also. Uh, So I've had a great time being totally not in control and letting the story evolve. I mean, that was my first thing to myself. Shut up. (laughs) Do not think. Do not make your narrative. Let it keep showing itself to you. And that really helped. Lina, but isn't that the definition of art in the end? Because, you know, you don't know what you're getting. It sort of just evolves also rather than you control yes. it completely in which case it doesn't you know it loses art form in a sense so that is also exciting that you didn't you didn't have an answer you started imagine as against a normal script you didn't have an answer or a conclusion or an end you were just looking at it you're, actually that's it it's the whole thing is just looking at it and you're letting us yes. look at it also which is the right way to do it am i right for a documentary what do you do and that's the way we even structured it you know like the way we experienced it over two years we gave it to you in two and a half kind of you know the way the points where we, when we were asking which question and what we were getting was the kind of structure that we tried to keep to. Um, also, there was a great commentary like the show. I, I'm sure that wasn't the initial uh, idea, but becomes a great commentary on the media itself, on the role of the media in such cases where they are just they they have their deadlines. They have to just go with whatever intuition they have with uh, without having like actual solid facts in place. Uh, again, very interesting of what the media, how the media kind of also was part of the story in a very big way. Silvery, this is this is also normal media, the so-called good media also, not just yeah. the nine pm English and Hindi channels, <laughs> which is uh, yeah. another art form altogether. Uh, why did they back off from it, Lena? They backed off from the story, as you said, uh, after a month. The Arushi and other controversial cases were so strong in terms of because of media presence. Uh, Jessica Lal comes to mind. Arushi comes to mind. No, yeah. because this needed another kind of investigation and. Um which they were not, I don't think, was the selling kind of investigation which would have brought them headline kind of news. They wanted more glamour in the... in the. No, also, so many times the uh, conversation should have been about mental health and it actually goes somewhere else and drops off. We just don't want to go there. We'll do everything. We'll do every other drama, but we won't go there. You know, and this became a drama. But is there a sense of evil that you, you felt also uh, with uh, maybe a perpetrator or certain individuals? Actual evil? 
because you can't give proper answers to why q q aisa q what is the soch what is the thought no i think like at the end of it na i just for me the discussion started at when you knew who is the victim and who is the perpetrator and then that is the point of take off and really understanding how did this whole thing come to be i think society and our conditioning is the biggest perpetrator in this there is nothing else it's our conditioning and our desperate want to believe in something which will just magically give us answers you know and the failure of not being able to ask why man that i think is one of our biggest failures in so many ways in so many ways yeah this is why very often uh, invaders have come and gone also because they don't want to resist we just accept too often silvi now when you go back to ivm office on monday morning you demand non veg food in the canteen you do what you have to do you stand okay. up for your principles better yeah. enough is yeah. enough otherwise i'll start writing my diaries mm. <laughs> beware <laughs> no sorry <laughs> <laughs> but but write in really like you know bad fonts and all that so they have to really struggle <laughs> the interpretation is will be a yeah. separate episode chalo shall we uh, go to uh, yeah miss yeah uh, i have just one last question yeah. uh, about again in this subject uh, i'm sure after uh, since the shows i come out lena 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 i'm worried about this guy huh? he's crazy no, no. he's he's, <laughs> he's now he'll start talking you he's he loves this show he's been trying to get you on for a long time and he this is a genre which now is he's i feel you reach a point where you you know obsessing too much he's like how someone really likes cricket or you know sport or whatever he's reached that point i'm little worried i uh, hope oh, antrish come yeah. and meet me does it yes absolutely it doesn't man. inspire we'll do yeah horrible question it doesn't inspire people right that's the other thing people ask all the time ki you know watching this copycat killers so to speak what they talk about and all that does it inspire I person mean, not inspire i think it could be triggering ha motivate triggering ha uh, but we we yeah we were very very conscious uh, at so many levels uh, we had people watch it also so also did you expect one i mean one you were making it from the right perspective right and for the right reasons whatever we wanted to say so that was and as a team we were always calling each other out you know we need to pull back on this etc so i hope we with and from the looks of whatever discussions are happening i think we have managed to hit the right balance no no I'm, obviously now we can't if people draw what they draw from something they can do anything i mean you can't point fingers my only worry is sometimes that uh, you know but what i'm saying for silvery is that do you cross that edge by watching something like this where you're just interested you're curious and from curious you become obsessive from obsessive you go little you know triggers as you say and suddenly think you're that person let's not uh, speculate about that you know you okay. made the film okay, one, you leave it something out. you said something you said Seriously. dolina you you had said yeah. that there's a there was a two month gap between the adams cult thing and the time when this family started maintaining okay. their diaries are you saying that yeah. there's some kind of a like a loose connection you're expecting there or something no i was we were investigating we ke- obviously went into each case that was similar what was happening culturally how does it connect so that was anyway part of our research but this one specially caught my attention because of the time frame because one also has to think that it takes it takes something to make this happen within a family right and mm-hmm. was there some inspiration was there something that gave them an idea about something so for from that perspective i was uh, investigating this thing and uh, i even spoke to the journalist who reported it uh, it oh. was crazy times actually during uh, covid it was he used to speak in uh, bengali i had a bengali friend come on the call and he was always there was obviously a lot of covid trauma happening there so our conversations are really bizarre but uh, finally i mean they didn't have records i was asking for some diary pages they didn't have that so anyway it didn't lead anywhere so that was the other thing that unless something led to something conclusive already this case had so many things so we didn't go into a lot of the narratives that we did uh, in west uh, so after the since the show has come out it's been received like i would say quite well uh, have you gotten like just barrages of people saying ki, oh you should look into this case also oh, you should look into that case also oh what about this what about that and sending you just cases after cases after cases no i'm suddenly no. feeling very <laughs> left out now <laughs> jasus lena oh, his, his point is uh, jasus <laughs> lena nahi ho said nahi ho but the police are okay of of at the portrayal and all that uh, yeah so the thing is the uh, the moment it was getting released is when panic hit me in a big way because i don't know i mean obviously intention was right and all but has the balance gone off for anybody either a friend or family who trusted us and you know 
uh, whether they will be offended about something, the way we portrayed them or the cops, anything could have gone wrong. And in this country, anything can go wrong. So, uh, yes, I was really scared, but I remember the date was launched at 12, around 4.35, I got a call from the DCP, uh, DCP Joy Terke. And he was like, ma'am, this is amazing. And I just like, I felt so relieved in that one moment. Wow. He says, I had no idea, you know, this is where it could go. It's really, really good. And Sylvie, the point of that story is DCP called her ma'am. And you're still saying Lina, Lina, Lina. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> what the hell is going yes. on with you? Yeah? Lack of <laughs> Okay, shall we try the end? Why do you call it yes. silvery, by the way? Uh, no, okay. That's another show for you. That's okay. I'm giving you a great story. Okay, now this is more yeah. Karan Johar than Lina yeah. Yadav. Okay, this is going more this that is, direction. Uh... In a Punjabi family, there were two boys. <laughs> One boy's pet name was Goldie. And for the birth of the second boy who followed, they said what to name him. And they had options of Richie, yeah, silvery. Because Goldie Every, is Goldie yeah. and Richie, so, a typical yeah. pet name. So my actual name at home is Richie, and my brother's actually Goldie because Punjabis, Punjabis have pet names and all that. Okay, and I told Cyrus this the first day I was on the podcast as a producer. I told Cyrus that when I was born, there was a debate between my family whether to call me Silvery or Richie, and immediately Cyrus was like, "Dude, I'm, you're Silvery now, man. It just it can't be helped." <laughs> so that's that's on me. I How blame myself. How did you let it go, yar? One is Goldie, hai, so obviously second is Silvery. Banana should be. You know, there's linear thinking there, yeah. Why let it go? So we we re- renamed him. The mistake the family made, we have corrected it. And this I'm giving you this story. You can make a full OTT show. Enjoy it. This will this will be because you need to uh, cleanse yourself, not detox after this kind of very heavy no, show. No, this will be a very important subplot in the Panjgani story. Oh yes, <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah. the Panjgani beatings. Wow, so you're going to be famous, bro. Don't worry. <laughs> oh, All right, sorry. Let's get uh, on let's get to the AMAs. Follow me at Instagram and Twitter on Board Brocha. I'm so bored. I need your help. I need your love. I need your touch. Okay, just, just, just follow me. First one comes in from Ruchika Kishore. She says, uh, "Hi, Silas and guest. Big fan of the show. What is an interview question that interviewers should ask more?" She says, "I feel bad that sportsmen and celebrities get asked the same question again and again. But what is one question that you like to be uh, like to be asked because you like talking about the subject of the question?" Or what is a question that you have never been asked but would like to be? You're giving uh, me that uh, one opportunity. Like to... <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. I'm just saying like this feels like it's an opportunity and I've gone blank. <laughs> <laughs> to, to take on all the people. Well, there's so many things like uh, one question I'd like to be asked is what would India be like without Indians? You know, imagine that scenario. Uh, that would be something interesting. But I, I think the one thing that we should but not a ask a lot of is interviewers. You, to interview you with just they have to do the job so it is very very frustrating um and secondly they don't they're not listening and that's so horrible when you're being interviewed the person is not talking about us (laughs) 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 he's gently nudged nudged the point in finally get boss sunday do na (laughs) No, I see it in people's eyes. They are calculating. Agla kya bujhu, kya bujhu. Correct. <laughs> yeah, they you know, don't uh, let no. the story uh, weave itself, you know, because they've got their 10 questions and you want to go back to question three, but you have taken the story <laughs> somewhere else. So they just don't want to go there. Have to go back to and sometimes three. I've answered question one to five already. And he doesn't yeah. have there any you go. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> But But they, they have that uh, thing huh, that they have to do those 10 questions. So whatever happens, they'll keep going back. Yeah, that is a problem. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, I don't know. So I don't know what this question is. It's very difficult. <laughs> no, no, I'm just saying we have you on a show and we're talking to you about this. Obviously, we're talking about the uh, the House of Secrets. But the thing is that you know, if if we try and go into your body of work from start to finish, it'll never end. So I always think when there's a famous person, they've got lots. Then there's no point getting into it. You Google it and you and people know you. They know about you also. But what they don't know is the other side to you and all that. How you made this? What goes on in your in your mind in your psychology? Uh, on all that. I think that's more, much more fun even for us to talk about and I'm sure for you to talk about also sometimes. What's the point of yeah. listing of great achievements that in the end, you know, only my mother can do that. She'll still mention that he came third in the race in second standard. Uh, the referee <laughs> cheated. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he was going to be fourth. <laughs> but Rafi <laughs> was on our side. <laughs> there were only two. There were only two people, Silvery. I came third. He <laughs> had low self-esteem yeah. in life. Mein. <laughs> 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 okay. Next one. What about you? 
What is a question that you would not like to be asked or would like to be asked? Me? Uh, I mean, I've never been interviewed, so I can, I'll go with any question right now. Just ask me anything. <laughs> so please. The question that I hate yeah. is, who are you? Especially when they recognize you <laughs> and they come up to you and they do. You can see the pechan thing in the eye, and then they say, "Who are you?" <laughs> it's so big. I know. I don't know. Yes. Yeah, it's a yeah, yeah. failure. <laughs> and then, then I go with my Sajid Khan and this, and I give all kinds of answers. It's great fun. Yeah. yeah. All right. Uh, the next one comes in from Samarth Bisha. He says, "My mother gets very scared in enclosed spaces." That's the subject line. He says, uh, "I remember once me and my mom got stuck in an elevator." and she just started yeah. panicking i felt bad but i also couldn't stop laughing my ass off at her uh, panic basically he's saying so he says what are you like in such situations haris and dear guest uh, do you also do you go crazy this? or are you or are you more calm in such situations also have you ever gotten stuck in an in a lift so i have and my mom also is scared in elevators she's claustrophobic for sure anything like that but luckily we have old building and jhali lift so no worry You never, you. It's always open in a sense, you, whatever. But I've been, I've been stuck in one of these in Nariman Point in a corporate uh, lift before this mobile phone culture also, and that was a little scary. It took about fifteen twenty minutes to open it, sweating and all that because everything shuts, light goes off, everything goes off. Horrible experience. Uh, something like being in a cult, I would think. You know, just very dark for a little period of time. By the way, my dog has started addressing the nation. This is the standard of the podcast you come on, Lena. I want you to remember that. <laughs> so the next time we call you, you you have to give the answer Bollywood is famous for. Madam is having shower. You know, okay, the, they have two three excuses. No, this yes. is are there two three excuses that have to be recycled? <laughs> Silver, boy. Yep. So no, no, sorry, uh, oh. I didn't answer. No. Uh, what what are you like in the elevator? If you have or have you ever been stuck in an elevator? Ah, Lena, you didn't answer. Oh, I have to answer. Oh. I have been you... stuck in an elevator also in pre mobile times. It was very oh, wow. freaky. and i was feeling actually pretty scared i was feeling like gravity had gone and i was just saying thinking it's going to drop down and that was i was building that up in my head quite scarily uh but uh, yeah but i'm not claustrophobic and i think i'll handle it and then asim asim sa- saved you by opening with his powerful arms he pulled open yes. the doors and yes. picked you up and saved you and took you to safety and then the lift and went. then i have asim bajaj yes Yes, and, and he has a only... Superman suit ready yeah. anytime. <laughs> and then the neighbor turned to camera and said, "Dega, hamara bajaj." <laughs> yes. <laughs> We are making small films here on the side, Silvery. Please take note. Yeah, yeah, sure, sure. <laughs> All right. Uh, this one, next one comes in from Archal Thukral. She says, "Hi, Sai Sandhya guest. One of my favorite things is to sit around with my friends and discuss stories." Where one of us got super ultra drunk and made a nuisance. Uh, Cyrus, I know you've shared a few, but can you please share a story with us which you haven't shared earlier of you of your drunk escapades? But let's. Lena comes from the same culture. Lena also, please. Yes. Her husband had a peg or two in his time. <laughs> Asim. Any embarrassing story? Does not drink. Asim does not drink, drink at all. Yeah. Neither do I yes. now. By the way. So we can operate the elevator. Sure. Remember that. <laughs> yes. Thank God. <laughs> But any, any any embarrassing story, or were you part of a, somebody else's embarrassing story? We all have some stories. Uh, I've been drunk, lots, but I don't know nothing that's standing out. Come on, you tell one. <laughs> I remember a Bombay Times party in Oberoi. Uh, I the there were a lot of people trying to go to the loo. The male loo was very crowded. So I remember Rahul Bose and me going into the female loo. And we were greeted very nicely by all these rich, uh, highfalutin VIP type women socialites and whatever. Who knows? He's so drunk by then. It was amazing because every time I've gone to, I'm going to female lose many times in my life. Audience to note, uh, it's always a very bad reception generally from if there's a woman inside of any kind, any class, whatever. Uh, but this was like amazing. And I remember that one woman was doing a lipstick and chatting, and I was sitting on the. I have a vague memory sitting on the basin. You know, it's so large those. Uh, washing basin areas that you can sit on it like furniture, you know. <laughs> it was like a dehati in a five-star hotel, and she was chatting with me, and she was doing a thing, and he had gone to pee inside the cubicle. So yeah, I've I, I'll write down all my stories. There are many. These are the better ones. There are much worse ones also. Lena, you can make a movie. Panchgani is the first one, beating the <laughs> second is drinking in South Mumbai. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Two slightly better, easier subjects to take away the. The dard of this very hard one. Dard. I have a story, but I have I have a drunk story. Okay, please, please. <laughs> okay. yes, 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 yes. Please go ahead. Uh, yeah. Which connects to one of my films also. So, uh, the day we finished shooting past, which was very, very, very difficult to shoot, uh, a scene holding it together. But we shot, and we had shot the 
nudity scene so it was just like this for the whole unit and i remember because we were running out of money we had to rush back to the hotel and fly out in like some 3 hours all of us got shots uh of vodka and we all jumped into the pool we said we have to live it all up in like the next 2 hours and so we are all in the pool and obviously we not slept for days together i think that hit all of us and i remember the pool cleaner coming at 7 in the morning and he's like cotton is not allowed in the pool everything will get stuck in the <laughs> well right. and i'm yeah. telling asim just take me out i think i'm going to get stuck i won't cotton <laughs> <laughs> yes yeah, so that's my drunk story mm. <laughs> but not so bad but both of us always so have bad. to do with five star hotels or hotels getting destroyed in some way or hey, i was yes. in i have in i have a five star story uh, five star hotel story come on like, beta during a hat trick this uh. happened at my brother's wedding my brother got married in 2018 okay and this oh. was at kohinoor hotel in bombay and uh, my some of my friends uh, got super drunk okay at the wedding we like just shot up the shot of shot got super drunk and uh, i was like okay don't i have a room in the same hotel just come crash the night and go the next morning right but they're all super drunk they enter the room they all just spray themselves on, on the couch and uh, we all close our eyes and a minute later i hear like someone gurgling from my from my left a friend of mine has started throwing up on himself poor guy very bad disgusting yes but that's not the end of it i tell him like, dude at least go to the washroom so i tell him like i'm a little pissed i like, dude at least go to the washroom what are you doing he tries to get up in getting up he throws up on my brother shirwani this is my brother's wedding This is a sherwani he has to wear to the wedding. <laughs> he threw up on the sherwani, okay? And then after that, like, oh man, I'm like, oh, I don't know what to do. Just go to the washroom. Just go, go, go. He goes to the washroom. My brother comes like two minutes after that. My brother comes like, what's the commotion? What happened? He sees that someone has thrown up on his sherwani. Sees another friend of mine sleeping on the couch, like merrily just sleeping. Thinks it was him. My brother gets angry and starts like, or like holding my friend's collar and all, dude. But there, everyone's drunk. My brother's also drunk. My friend is also drunk. My friend, while having his collar held, is just laughing. I'm like, he's like, not me, and he's laughing, dude. So that's uh, the story I remember. <laughs> Someone threw on my brother's sherwani. <laughs> so if he had put you back in the village, uh, somewhere deep in Ludhiana <laughs> territory, you would have taken out guns and all, and then and he shot the wrong guy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly, exactly. That's exactly it. Yeah, that's what yeah, I. We got a lot of plots for Lena. Now. So she can <laughs> later after the show is over, she can sit and think about which one to go for. Yeah, yeah. So, should we take one last one? Right, so, sure. One last one comes in from Gayatri Dave. She says, uh, "Hi, Cyrus and dear guest. Huge fan of the show. Writing in for the first time. Thanks, Gayatri." She says, uh, "What is a moment in your life?" Most of them write in for the first time, Silvery, and never again. Yeah, so I know, never again. <laughs> <laughs> first time, last time. <laughs> uh, so she, she says, "What has been a moment in your life that you think about about once a month?" So, I think she wants to say that we all have these moments that randomly, oh, it's like, you... "Oh yeah, I did that one time," you know. Or, or that happened. She meant time. like the male, the male period. My wife is convinced <laughs> I have male period because little things uh, knock me off, like driving. I have the same triggers. Lena, do you have the same triggers? After some time living with people, the, you can tell that these are two, three areas where the person misbehaves. I think most of us are yeah, similar. And the same scene, the same scene plays same out. Same scene plays out. Same yeah. one. Yeah. <laughs> same scene. Yeah. <laughs> My my yeah. story. Is, uh, this is I know we're talking about such a heavy topic, uh, House of Secrets. But look at the other end of it again. We have fights over such ridiculous things. There's a window which is uh, slightly the curtain because my wife, being an artist, she made a curtain which is very like fancy, and you can the light comes through it. She likes all that, and little bit of the window can be seen. I like to walk around wearing very little clothing, so I cover that with a newspaper, and she goes berserk because you know her interior design mind. is like how can you against the curtain have this newspaper you know which i do just cover it like a man you'll take a shoe and cover it or a paper or you find a little you know whatever you find you just dump it there so yeah this is can you believe we fight over this this is a major fight yes, yes. when you said yeah. new, i put a newspaper there i got triggered <laughs> <laughs> i was like But, why would you <laughs> <laughs> I want to cover. I want to cover the light. It's a serious issue, man. Now I'm scared to ever do it again because what I do is when she comes home late, I have covered it. <laughs> Lena, sometimes and she she's supposed to come home at seven and I'm already home, so I've covered it and then I've not taken it out in time because she came back at five. She walks in, sees first she goes there. Nobody says hello. First she goes there. It's like a dog with a ball. She goes straight there, looks at it, and then screams. And then the <laughs> panga start. Oh man, it's ridiculous. Yeah. Listen, I have to yeah. meet her. We have no, to meet. No, 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 no. <laughs> anyway, 
with that awkward moment we have to keep the wife separate let the friendship be a same and me let's keep <laughs> the women apart <laughs> Anyway, Nina has been great talking to you. I know we're laughing a lot in the second half, but what a fantastic job and what a subject and really what courage you have to go and do it. You know, I mean, this is by no means a glamour sort of uh, assignment, and I can imagine what it's taken out of you. So really fantastic. Really, we're all big fans. Yeah, and can't wait for the, the next. And the whole team. It was a. It and the whole team. Brilliant, brilliant. brilliant. Whole but it's a leader. I don't want to give it away. <laughs> in a way, you know what I mean, huh? हाँ बोलो बोलो सर जल्दी आई जस्ट रियलाइज नाउ आई थिंक दैट लीना विल बी क्रेडिटेड विद स्टार्टिंग दिस इंडियन ट्रू क्राइम वेव ऑफ आई डोंट थिंक दैट्स एनीथिंग बिफोर दिस सो दैट्स समथिंग ग्रेट इन योर रेसिपी आई थिंक नाउ पाइनियर स्टार्टेड दिस हु मेड अस लुक इनटू द डार्क अंडरबेली ऑफ इंडियाज हॉरेबल सीरियल मर्डर कम सुइसाइड्स एंड वी हैव या वेरी कूल यू प्रोबब्ली जस्ट डोंट नो राइट लीना आई मीन इन द हार्टलैंड प्रॉपर एंड ऑल यू प्रोबब्ली डोंट नो द स्टोरीज यार आई रिमेंबर रंगा बिल्ला ग्रोइंग अप फॉर एग्जांपल एज सीरियल किलर्स and uh, there are a few here and there but by and large across country i mean even that do we know what happened we don't know no, we, don't know, know. we know bits yeah it's it's we need to finish our stories we need to know what happened you know not just get really moved away and then it's gone and but there's so much information over what it did a lot of rich people who were taking taxis started taking the bus that's the only <laughs> sorry i should that's <laughs> that's a yeah, on a nice insensitive moment we end our show lira yes. thank you so much please thank say hi to asim And the way he comes I back, huh? I will. Yeah, I believe will. me. Thank you. He he actually told me that lighting me is easier than lighting Malika or Sophia. So you please understand. Oh okay, wow! <laughs> Natural beauty, Silvery, beta. Natural <laughs> beauty. We <laughs> have to do makeup and all, yar. I mean, in the old days. <laughs> Chalo, bye guys. Bye. Bye. -bye. Have a good day. Bye. Good evening. Okay, catch us on any of the podcasting apps, please. We beg you, we need you. Send us your questions on Twitter on Cyrus Says In, or you can email us, even if you're not female, on What Cyrus Says at Gmail dot com. Eventually, you'll see the end of your childhood. Get accustomed to womanhood. Enjoy the experience of sisterhood. Might get to wifehood or not. Choose motherhood or not. You learn to define your personhood, earn a livelihood, change the neighborhood, and get rid of the falsehood that life post academia is easy. So join me, Ratasha, and me, Ayushi, on a journey from station starting point to station um what now? Next station, Pudding Station, and hopefully Agla Station, Adulthood. Fresh episodes out every Thursday. You wonder why China does the things that it does. I want to know how we could improve online privacy, or perhaps you're thinking about how we can kickstart India's economy. If you'd like to search for the answers to such questions, check out All Things Policy, a daily public policy podcast that covers everything from employment figures to aircraft carriers. Tune in from Monday to Friday for new episodes and fresh takes.